What is the answer to the most important question about life, the universe, and everything? In The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a science fiction spoof by Douglas Adams, the answer was found to be 42. But the hardest part was finding the real question. I think it's funny that Douglas Adams made a joke about the number 42, because math has been a big part of how we learn about the universe. Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today's video is about what if our universe is math. However, before we begin our video, we'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also press that bell icon. Let's get started. Math was used to predict the Higgs boson, just like it was used to predict Neptune and the radio wave. Galileo famously said that the universe is a grand book written in the language of math. So, why does our universe seem so mathematical? What does that mean? In my new book, Our Mathematical Universe, I argue that this means that our universe isn't just described by math, but that it is math, in the sense that we're all parts of a giant mathematical object, which is part of a multiverse so big that it makes the other multiverses that have been debated in recent years look small. Math, math, everywhere. But what does all this math have to do with anything? Don't numbers play a big role in math? If you look around right now, you might see a few numbers here and there, like the page numbers in your latest copy of Scientific American. However, these numbers are just symbols that people made and printed, so they don't really show that the universe is mathematical in a deep way. Because of the way we teach, many people think that math is the same as arithmetic. Mathematicians, on the other hand, study abstract structures that are not numbers, such as geometric shapes. Do you see any shapes or patterns that are made up of straight lines? Hmm. Again, designs made by people don't count, like the square shape of this book. But try throwing a pebble and look at the beautiful path it takes because of the way nature works. When you throw something, it always goes in the same shape, which is called an upside-down parabola. When we watch how things move in orbits in space, we notice another shape that keeps coming up, the ellipse. Also, these two shapes are related. The tip of a very long ellipse looks almost exactly like a parabola, so all of these parts are just parts of ellipses. We humans have slowly found more shapes and patterns in nature that happen over and over again. These include not only motion and gravity, but also electricity, magnetism, light, heat, chemistry, radioactivity, and subatomic particles. The rules for these patterns are called laws of physics. All of these laws can be described with math equations, just like the shape of an ellipse. There are more signs of math in nature than just equations. You can also find numbers. Unlike the page numbers in this book, which were made by people, I'm now talking about numbers that are fundamental parts of our physical world. For example, how many pencils can you set up so that they're all parallel to each other at 90 degrees? Three. For example, by putting them along the three edges of a room corner. How did that number three get there so fast? We call this number the dimensionality of our space. But why are there only three dimensions and not four, two, or forty-two? And as far as we can tell, there are exactly six different kinds of quarks in our universe. There are also numbers in nature that need decimals to be written out. For example, the proton is about 1836.15267 times heavier than the electron. From these 32 numbers, physicists can, in theory, figure out every other constant that has ever been measured. Something about our universe is very mathematical, and the more we look, the more math we seem to find. So, what should we make of all these mathematical clues in the real world? Most of my physics colleagues take them to mean that mathematics can, at least roughly, describe nature and stop there. But I'm sure there's more to it. And let's see if it makes more sense to you than it did to that professor who said it would ruin my career. <laughs> the Theory of the Mathematical Universe Back when I was in graduate school, all of these math clues really interested me. One evening in Berkeley in 1990, my friend Bill Poirier and I were talking about the ultimate nature of reality. Suddenly, I had an idea of what it all meant. Our reality isn't just described by mathematics, it is mathematics in a very specific way. Not just some parts of it, but the whole thing, which includes you. The external reality hypothesis, which is where I started, 
says that there's a physical reality outside of us humans that is independent of us. When we figure out what a theory means, we use new ideas and words, like protons, atoms, molecules, cells, and stars, because they make things easier. But it's important to remember that we humans come up with these ideas. In theory, everything could be figured out without all this baggage. But if we assume that reality exists apart from humans, then a complete description must also be clear to non-human entities, like aliens or supercomputers that don't understand human concepts. This brings us to the mathematical universe hypothesis, which says that our physical world is a mathematical structure. But that would be a little inconvenient because it would take you longer to say than the age of our universe. It would also be pointless, since all the particles are stuck together and move as a single unit. So, we humans came up with the word ball to refer to the whole unit. This saves time because we only have to describe how the whole unit moves once. Humans made the ball. But it's a lot like molecules, rocks and stars, which are also made up of many parts. Coming up with words for them saves time and helps us understand the world better. Even though they are useful, all of these words are just extra baggage. All of this makes me wonder if it's even possible to find a description of the outside world that doesn't involve any baggage. If that's the case, then a description of objects in this external reality and their relationships to each other would have to be completely abstract. Any words or symbols would have to be nothing more than labels with no meanings attached to them. Instead, these things would only have properties that are shown by how they relate to each other. In order to answer this question, we need to look more closely at math. For a modern logician, a mathematical structure is just this, a group of abstract things that are connected to each other. This is very different from how most of us first think of math, which is either as a cruel way to punish or as a set of tricks for playing with numbers. Modern mathematics is the formal study of structures that can be described in a way that has nothing to do with people. Think of mathematical symbols as labels that don't mean anything on their own. It doesn't matter if you write 2 plus 2 equals 4, or dos más dos igual a cuatro. The way the entities and relationships are written doesn't matter. The only properties of integers are those that are shown by the relationships between them. That is, we don't make up mathematical structures, we find them and make up the language we use to talk about them. In short, there are two main things to remember. The external reality hypothesis says that a theory of everything, a complete description of our external physical reality, has no baggage and that something with a complete description and no baggage is a mathematical structure. All of this points to the mathematical universe hypothesis which says that the theory of everything is describing a mathematical structure of the physical world. So, if you believe that there is a reality outside of humans, you must also believe that our physical reality is a mathematical structure. Everything in our world, including you, is based on math. That's it for today. We hope you found our video interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with others. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new uploads. In the end, thanks for watching and see you next time.